Good morning to one and all. Hello, children. I'm very happy to be back with you for the second session. So in the previous uh, session, we have started with our second unit in English, that's sports and games. And we have discussed certain questions. And we started with our reading to night. So let us recap what we have learned in the last session. Is uh, you all ready with your textbooks? <clears throat> yes, it's a second unit. It's a true height, A reading A. And uh, we have a statement is in the face sheet talks about a quotation, a famous quotation of Abdul Kana. Dream, dream, and dream high. The dreams lead to thoughts, and thoughts lead to actions. So I've been discussed and I asked you to write a write-up. I gave an assignment. What is the aim of your life? What is your dreams? Yes, to set, set a goal. And I hope you're ready with your assignment. And we have this I'll recap some questions I'll ask you from the previous session. What was Michael Stone's dream? Yes, we have seen as an athlete, was a sport. Yeah, it's pole vaulting. We have seen a short video how the pole vaulting would be. And uh, so that was to chase and to make it. He always dreamt of flying. And then, yes, it is. So he and his mother added strength to his dreams by reading numerous stories. His pole, pole vaulting is what kind of sport, children? Yeah, it has a grace of a gymnast and strength of a bodybuilder. That's good. What a glass of ice water, not to. Yes, it can quench its thirst, but it cannot cool down the intensity. Yes, it was yes, tensed. What impact did the mother's stories have on Michael? So what kind of, she always dreamed. Yeah, she added. Yes, she gave him strength, encouragement, inspiration, motivation, or the passion. So it she invigorated his dreams. Yes, what and the next question, what kind of a man was Bert Stone? Bert Stone, his mother, what kind of man? Yes, he is a hardcore realist. Yes, he say, if you want something, it is not just to sit and dream. It's good to have dream. Dream is nothing but a vision. We are setting a goal. But you have to really, really work hard. You have to put that into an action. You make a plan and you have to work your plan to reach your goal. That kind of man was Bert Stone. Okay, let us continue with today's lesson. I hope turn to your page. To 27, the last paragraph. So you can see all this, you can see on the screen. From the age of 14, Michael did just that. He began a very careful and regimented weightlifting program. He worked out every other day with weights, with some kind of running work on alternate days. The program was carefully monitored by Michael's coach, trainer, and father. Michael's dedication, determination, and discipline was a coach's dream. As children, you can see in the pictures given here. So he, at the age of 14, when did he begin? Almost he is of your age then. Yes, he began a regimented, what is underlined about regimented means? It's a well-planned, very strict weightlifting programs. Yes, and some kind of running workouts, alternatives. And this all, this uh, is monitored. Monitored means supervised and guided by whom? Michael's coach, trainer, and father. You can see in the picture, one of the pictures here, how coach is guiding him and asking him to do, okay? Training him. So it is all when we want to make our dreams true, a dream work is always a teamwork. Yes, children, a team of people around him, his trainer, 
his coach, his father, his mother, everyone are helping her, help, helping him and playing their part, okay, and in, in fulfilling his dreams. Michael's dedication, determination, and discipline was coach's dream. We have a three beautiful words. Children, you have to imbibe them into it. So what is this coach's dream? It's not just having a dream. The dream should be backed up. Yes, by what dedication? You should be dedicated to that one cause, one vision. And you should have strong determination in mind. And with great discipline, you should not deviate from that. You, then only you can make your dream come true or fulfilled. So then if you could turn to page 28, besides being an honor student, Michael Stone continued to help his parents with their form course. Michael's persistence in striving for perfection was not only his obsession, but his passion. So besides being, and besides is a word, is a preposition. Beside means being, a, being side. Beside means along with, and along with his practicing, we know for an event in it. But he's an honored student, means he never neglected his academics. He's an excellent academic achiever. So being that, so he's he's not cooled or oh, I'm studying well, I'm doing this workouts. No, along besides all this, what did he do? What else he did? He helped his parents with their form course. Course means the daily routines as a people who work out in the fields so he's a body we can see we can study the character of michael stone just a boy and one side all even we have to balance everything children one side of our academic our studies the household course and the other programs so like that he's a very good a boy in doing helping his parents michael's persistence in striving for perfection was not only his obsession, but his passion. What is it? What is the meaning of words here? What two words? Obsession and passion. You can understand. Obsession means something with what with which your mind is filled with. Our mind is full of. When your passion is related to heart, we, we desire something, we think about that thing. So heart and mind. Yes, children. So his dream of uh, winning the National Olympics is his passion and his obsession, obsession too. So for that, what he's doing, he's striving for perfection, persistence in striving. The striving is working hard for what? Perfection. How can we attain perfection, children? There's a saying, no, practice makes a man perfect. Yes. So he is striving for the perfection practice. How can we get that? Daily, because in the previous, in the above paragraph, is a care regimented program, carefully monitored by everybody, and every alternate is, days running. So he's, he's been doing that. So he's persistent. He's persistent means constant. Never give up. Pursue of dreams. We have seen in the last session. Pursue persistence for perfection. That is not only, but also it is a construction. Not only that. Something they uh, belong to her desire and give up. You know that energy to mind. So both are willing this mind and heart to achieve his goal. Mildred Stone, Michael's mother, wished that he could relax a bit more and be that free dreaming little boy. On one occasion, she attempted to talk to him and his father about this, but his dad quickly interrupted, smiled, and said. You want something, work for it. So mothers are always like that. As children, they were they have very soft corners. She can't see his son working out, sweating. So she said, let him relax for a bit. Oh, let him just do this. Yes, on an occasion she dared to speak up, but immediately his father interrupted. Sunderline the word interrupted means break the flow. She he stopped her. Speaking that topic, no, no relaxation. What is his motto, children? If you want something, work for it. You want to win, then work, no relaxation. The constance, the persistence, the consistency, 
that only that only will help you out to reach your goal okay so once again let me recall what are the three d's i asked you what is the first d dedication sorry dedication yes next one discipline and determination discipline and determination this 3d is you see in a 3d movies how exciting to watch so it is just i want to inculcate these three uh, words into your mind yes. with the help of this is the coach's dream which helped him enable him to focus more on and to, uh, run towards his goal so let us continue with all of michael walls today michael's walls today seem to be the reward of his hard work if michael stone was surprised thrilled or arrogant about clearing the bar at 17 feet you couldn't tell as soon as he landed on the inflated landing mat and with the crowd on its feet michael immediately began preparing for his next attempt at flight he seemed oblivious of the fact that he had just surpassed his personal best yes his His children, yes, just bear with me. His personal best, yeah, by three inches, and that was one of the final two competitors. He was one of the final two competitors in the pole vaulting event at the National Junior Olympics. So, it is today. Michael's walls, the pole walls, the poles, the bar that is set at a height of 17 feet seem to be reward of his hard work what is reward children what we get back paid back for all our hard work yes a farmer with seal sweat tilling and plowing and sowing and finally the bumper crop he gets his reward back so from right from the age of 14 he has been he had been working hard yes striving relentlessly so now he is at the next what is that event at the last line of the paragraph at right? national junior olympics right so that was a reward of his hard work so it michael stone uh, was surprised he cleared a bar of 17 feet and he was standing in his landed on the inflated landing mat that when they cross that side it is arranged uh, with the crowd on his feet you can see in this picture children the second pic on the stadium the stars all the people stood up in a standing ovation clapped and cheered up that he could clear the the bar at the first attempt so he seemed oblivious of the fact that he has just surpassed his personal best surpassed and crossed over above he crossed his personal best in starting of the lesson 14 inches so 3 inches but now 17 inches he crossed and he is one of the final two competitors here is a structure one of the whenever the structure one of the comes will always have a followed by a plural now is two competitors for the final say so one of he is one among them and uh, in the pole vaulting event at national junior olympics so mike cleared the bar at 17 feet and 2 inches and 17 feet 4 inches again he showed no emotion that's what the character of a player is they are very calm cool and composed neither excited not disappointed yes children so it's shown no emotion of the clearing one by two two inches higher they are increasing the height of that pole constant preparation and determination were his vision once again coming to the dream 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 high what is his vision constant with a persistence we saw what is constantly continuously without break without interruption what is that preparation and determination that that something to mind strongly determined to do something yes it's that is his vision a strong even uh, whatever the 
goal we have academically or in life or about career, we should have that uh, all is a set of mind. Yes, no children? So it's a constant preparation, determination were his vision. As he lay on his back and heard the crowd groan, he knew the other Walter had missed his final jump. He knew it was time for his final jump groan. Oh, it's a sound word, sound making word. No? So when the the spectators, the people gathered around, they lost, they're so excited. Something is one, the cheer of shout and uh, it is a miss or so they're all, oh, there's a sigh, a disappointing, it's groaning. Oh, the other Walter missed a jump. So it's my turn for the final jump. So it's getting ready for his final jump. It won't, it, where the event at the National Junior Olympics. Since the other Walter had fewer misses, Michael need to clear his wall to win. A miss would get him second place. Nothing to be ashamed of. But Michael would not allow himself the thought of not winning first place. What a wonderful determination. Yes, children. So the Walter is one of the final two competitors. He had other one had a few misses. So even if he must, he will be in the second place. But see, but Michael would not allow himself the thought, even he didn't allow the thought, was not winning the first place. Many a times, yes, the children, we are happy. Oh, it's good. I am among the first 10 ranks, first 10 toppers. It's okay for me. I'm better than the many. No, I was so determined. Second place is, is not complacent or satisfying. I should be the winner. Right? So, he didn't even allow the thought of not winning the first place. So here was the children. What is this once again from the previous slide? Motto of his father. He said mother wanted him to relax. No, if you want something, work for it. What is Michael's vision? Constant preparation. Yes, even for your next year going to face your secondary school. Yes, it's a C. So step by step, step by step, not in one day. We cannot do miracles. Uh, we cannot end upside down in one day. Constantly, gradually, it, we can reach step by step. We can reach goal. We can climb up. That is the slide about. And we'll continue. He rolled over and did his ritual. Three-fingered uh, push-ups. He found his... Paul stood and stepped on the runway that led to the most challenging event of his 17-year-old life, push-ups. So before an athlete or a player enter into the field, they'll do some warm-ups to physically make them ready. So we can see in this picture how he's doing his push-ups. And this is getting ready, stepped on the runway. So in the video we've seen, you have to run along and they should just take off into the fly into the air along with the help of the pole. So he's the most challenging, is a superlative degree. His children of his 17 years old life at that time of this event. How old was Michael? Yes, 17 years old. So it's the most challenging for him that day. The runway felt different this time. So he got used winning so many. Uh, events no at the zonal level, state level, national level. Now he's uh, representing his nation in the junior Olympics. But it though he got used this time is different. It's a challenging for him. It's different. He felt different. It startled him for a brief moment. Startled, surprised. Then it all hit him like a wet bale of hay. The bar was set at nine inches higher than his personal best. That's only one inch of the national record, he thought. The intensity of the moment filled his mind with anxiety. He began shaking off the tension from his body. It wasn't working. He became more tense. Why is this happening to me now, he thought. He began to get nervous. Afraid would be more accurate description. What was he going to do? He had never experienced these 
feeling so something different he felt all right children he is now standing he took his pole and stood on the runway he took his position so the intensity of the moment filled his mind with anxiety anxious anxiousness of fear he said a fright would be the accurate description what would be the feeling an unknown feeling a new feeling that is in him that would be easy a fright to face this challenge to take up this tension his legs were shaking sometimes we will undergo this things when we are uh, to take up something is challenging as children he began to get nervous so what was he going to do he had never experienced this feeling then out of nowhere and from the deepest depths of his soul he envisioned his mother why now what was his mother doing in his thoughts at a time like this it was simple his mother always used to tell him when you felt tense anxious or even scared to take a deep breaths okay so when he is very anxious and tensed from the deepest depths in the he envision vision means a picture of his mother it came to his mind you can see his mom's face with his mind sigh he was surprised in such a moment like this when i'm so tensed I'm going to face a, the most challenging event the big day okay the time what is mother doing in his thoughts then he something came to his mind he is recalling his mother's advice what did she say when you are tensed when you are scared when you are anxious she said take a deep breath like deep breaths usually we say no we'll talk so so many tips to release our anxiety or tension so why usually you no know, children even we say yoga gurus when we take a deep breath we supplying plenty of oxygen to the cells and our we become relaxed just that as the advice mother's advice came to his mind okay so he did what did he do so he did when he followed his mother's advice what came to his mind what is his mother's advice take deep breaths when you are tensed along with shaking the tension from legs he gently laid his pole at his feet and began to stretch out his arms and upper body the light breeze that was once there was now gone he could feel a trickle of cool sweat running down his back he carefully picked up his pole he felt his heart pounding he was sure the crowd did too the silence was deafening when he heard the singing of some distant robins in flight he knew it was his time to fly okay children so when he immediately put into action followed his implemented his mother's advice he could shake off his tension and uh, the tension shaking of the leg stopped he was again back to normal he could cool down himself and uh, he took his pole gently and he stood there he began and doing once again the stretches to relax him and the light breeze that was once there was now gone he could feel a trickle of cool sweat running the sweat running over his back he carefully put this his heart pounding pounding lap tap lap tap when we are so quiet focus we can even hear that the beating of a heart is pounding so he was sure the crowd did too what is what is the crowd they are also anxious to see the the other competitor missed what this participant is going to do they are also all the crowd gathered they are anxious to see the event to watch what uh, the winner who would be the winner how he is going to present it okay so they are also anxious the silence what deafening so quiet pin drop silence we say how deafening the crowd your ear uh, he is mine and in that silence he could hear some robin robins are the birds you can say somewhere and distantly they are flying the singing he could hear he knew that was sign it was his time to fly okay this right time coincidence sankarish mate always he is a recurring he had a recurring dream 
that he was flying. He is overtaking the locomotives. Yes, my children. So he is singing with the robins. All the crowd was quiet, anxiously waiting for him to jump. He also was physically and mentally is ready to take his plunge. Face his most challenging event. It's time for him to fly. So here, let us stop and uh, we'll see some of the hard words from this part. What we learned today. So glossary I have given here. And I'll read out the hard words for you. Regimented, obsession, oblivious, ritual, uh, finger-tipped, envision, runway, monitored, striving, course, interrupted, inflated, set pass, turtle, accurate. So children, list out these hard words into your notebook and collect some more words. Write the meanings and keep working out with vocabulary. And here is some review questions for you. From the part what we learn, how did Michael prepare himself to become an Olympic champion? So what all he did, the regimented workout, running, weightlifting, it's a teamwork we learned under the monitoring of his father, coach, trainer. So how all he prepared, write, copy down this Questions in your book, you have to answer them. Just comprehensive questions. And Michael's mother and father had different ideas about training. How did these two approaches help Michael fulfill his dreams? Okay, so we have, yes, for mother, one side is a great inspiration, motivator, father, another side. Okay, he's a hardcore realist. And here a plan, here's an action. Yes, they both these two approaches. How they helped him, uh, helped Michael to fulfill his dreams. You have to write. What was the advice of Michael's mother? He was intense. Yes, to take the deep breaths. Why Michael thought the National Junior Olympics most challenging event? Yes, you can say it's an event. Okay. Because it is his dream, his passion, his obsession, right from childhood and right from the 14 years old, uh, he has been working out, working out, striving for that. So it is now, but it's the day, it's the moment that was the day. his dreams are going to be fulfilled or come true. So it is the most challenging event for him. So write this uh, comprehension questions and try to answer them. It is an assignment for you. Uh, so I'm going to give you the discourse, the major discourse description. And uh, what uh, your question is, describe the feelings of Michael Stone as he stepped on the runway at National Junior Olympics. So describe the feelings. Here are the some hints I gave you. So how he felt, he's filled with anxiety, he's more tense. Yes, the accurate term would be fear. And this feeling is something new. He envisioned his mother, his legs were shaking. His cold sweat going down on his back. His heart pounding is a deafening silence. So you could use some of these phrases um, to write your assignment as children. And that is description. So write it in. As you know, all the discourse, major discourses of for 10 marks, it should be some at least 15 to 20 sentences. You could read, you go through your textbook, yes, and uh, write this and get ready for the next session. And go through the lesson reading is very important, children, and write down the vocabulary words, comprehension questions, and this description part. Okay, and meet you, see you in the next session. Till then, take care. This is this is Glory Sravanti, English teacher, ZPSS Sanada. Thank you.